Hello and welcome to another ranking video for the FF14 Dungeons, but today we're ranking their soundtracks. So every dungeon in FF14 has a theme, and they share battle themes for the most part, but they all have a theme. And I wanted to take a video, as I have with some of the other soundtracks, to rank the individual themes. I'm going to rank them based on how I think it fits thematically with the dungeon, the song itself and how much i like the song so this is going to be very much more subjective than a lot of the others uh, but it will also be analytical because again we're going to look at how it fits the dungeon itself and for the most part it's going to be based on that there's not going to be a lot of other things uh, like for instance the twinning theme is absolutely amazing and we'll probably get a triple s tier uh whether it fits that dungeon or not because it's just so good but for instance something like Tamtara hard is not that great of a song on its own really to me but fits the dungeon perfectly so we're going to try and find a good balance between the two of those but we're going to start off with sestasha um the sestasha theme is it's kind of a lot of the early aor themes are kind of just there in the background it's not really much of anything it's just a background song almost it's just there you know uh it's there to give the dungeon some extra love and give you something else to notice while you're playing but it's definitely not what it's there for and i don't have a note here because there's not really any themes that i think are, are not worth listening to at all um but i do think the sestasha theme is is not that great uh it is kind of bubbly so it does kind of fit the theme of the dungeon but there's really not a lot to these early arr themes uh it definitely gets a lot better as we go but i'm just not a huge fan of the sestasha theme in that same way, like the Tamtara theme is kind of like, there's a mystery here uh, feeling. It sounds a lot like the Sestasha theme. It is definitely different, but it just doesn't really stick out to me. And again, as always, as we're going through these, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and tell me which ones you think were the best ones. But uh, I'm just not a huge fan of the Tamtara theme. There are a couple things that it does here and there that I think are really cool. Um, as there's like this undercurrent of do, 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 as it builds up because, you know, Tamtara is a big mystery, but we're going to put it in a B because I think it's fine, but it's not really what I'm looking for. And it may go down to a C. I think Copper Bell catches your attention right away. It has a really nice swell to the start of it. And then it has a good through line that is going to keep your attention. It's, it's, Maybe not as great as some of the other ones on this list for sure, but it definitely is more there than the Temptara or the Sestasha songs. And I like it. I Again, I don't think that I would listen to it much out of the game, but it's definitely solid. It's, it's there. It's existing, you know? So we're going to give it an A, I believe. And we'll move on to Halatali. Halatali's not bad. It it does definitely have like feel of a struggle as it's surging up and then and then ebbing back down. Um, I especially like it when the piano cuts in, but I think it, we're probably gonna put it in a B. It's about where it would sit for me. I do think the do 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 of it is really solid. I like that quite a bit. We'll probably put it at the top of B right now. I'm still listening to it right now. It might move up to an A. I forgot that it done da da does. That is one thing too that I wish I could you know share all these, but for copyright. Uh, but I will be listening to them as we go to make sure that I don't misrepresent any of them. Um, and they're really good, so you should check them out. Uh, Mecha D on YouTube has a really good playlist of all of them. Temptara's is really solid, actually. For as much as I dislike that dungeon, it's a really good theme, and it has a a really good build up as it goes. I think it's really solid, especially among the early dungeon themes. I think it does a really good job. Not as good as, say, Hawk Manor, which is going to go straight up to an S. Uh, the organ, right off the bat, catches your attention, tells you what kind of dungeon you're in, fits so well thematically, lets you know exactly what's going on here. This is a haunted house. This is going to be rough. This is going to get a little spooky. And uh, once the organ cuts out, then comes the choir. And I just think... Of the song so far, it does the best job of selling you on what the dungeon is and on what you're going to be facing in the dungeon. 
Granted, it is easier to convey this is a haunted house than it is to convey this is an old training ground, but I do think they just did a very good job with uh, the soundtrack for Hawk Manor. And this is not, this list is not in any way to say that Sokin or any of the rest of the team did a bad job with any of these songs. It's just to rank how well I think they fit the dungeons and my personal enjoyment of them with how well they fit the dungeons. So, again, no offense of any kind meant to Sokin. I think that Masayoshi Sokin is one of the best composers in anything ever. So, big shout out to Sokin. Following Hawk Manor, we have Brave Locks Longstop. It definitely has like a whimsy feel to it. That is very reminiscent of the instruments that are used with the rest of the music of the goblins in the game. And the undertone that comes in of the bass kind of gives you that feel of like, hey, here we go. You know, this is this is going to be a journey. I definitely think it belongs at A. I don't think it completely conveys what's going on with Brave Flocks, really, to me. But the flutes that come in are really good. I'll warn you, I like a lot of the music in this game. Uh, yeah, Brave Flocks, it's pretty good. Only that is Karn. Karn was one of those songs early on when I first started playing 14 that I was like, oh... Um, because I definitely think it conveys the idea of, hey, you're in a ruined out temple. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Yeah, it's, it's very solid. I think it's also going to go in an A. It doesn't ever really go to any great extreme, but when the main line fades out and then you have the the back swelling in it's pretty good it's pretty good i like it a lot i just i think it's an a you know it it i definitely would say it's the top of a but following that is cutters and cutters is like it's a lot of drums it's a lot of bass it's not bad it has a nice little fade out and then it comes back in again. I don't know that it really conveys cutters. I don't know that anything could convey cutters. I don't know that cutters conveys cutters. Like if I was to ask you, what is the main theme of cutters? What would you tell me? Going down into an ant's den to fight a chimera? Like there's no real through line for the narrative of Cutter's Cry. But I do think the song is really solid. I think they did a good job with that. I'll put it in a B. I think the song would fit more along the line of like cliffside mountain fight with the oh that's coming into the background, you know, of the choral section. But it's not bad. So following that, we have Stone Vigil. And I think Stone Vigil is probably the first one after Hawk that I was like, oh yeah. This fits it. This feels like I'm, you know, fighting against an oppressive force, working my way into one of their strongholds, you know? Stone Vigil's good, man. It fits the dungeon very, very well. I guess I could be saying the name of the songs, too, as we go. Sestasha's theme is called From the Depths. Tamtara's theme is called Slumber Disturbed. Copperbell's theme is called Below. Alatali's theme is called The Ludus. Thousand Maws of Todorak is called A Thousand Screams. Hawk Manor is called The Maiden's Lament. Brave Floxes is called Lip Flaps on Long Stops. Karn's theme is called Echoes of Ages Past. Cutter's Cry theme is called Abomination. And Stone Vigil's theme is called Cold Salvation. Next up is The Darkhold, which is Zamile Darkhold's theme. This is another one that I think actually fits it really well. It's got like an adventurous vibe to it while also having that of like hey there's also really bad danger here uh because you get into the adventure theme of it do, 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 you know and then it's just the and it catches your attention again and reminds you oh this place is overrun with demons we gotta be careful and i really love it when music you know conveys that identity i think it does a very good job of that the dark hold in the mile dark hold 
do 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 Following that is Miser's Folly from Orem Vale. I actually don't hate this song. I think it's it's a pretty decent song. I hate this dungeon. Um, but I don't hate the song at all. I think it does its job, you know. It's it's foreboding. It has a sense of dread to it. Um it definitely conveys the dungeon. I just don't really like it that much as a song. I think because it's so subdued, I think it has the same problem as Sestasha for me, which is that it's just so subdued that by the time it does start moving, it's, it's just lost me, you know? And there are definitely places for songs like that, like Snow Cloak coming up is going to be one of those. But... It just, I don't know. I might move it up to a B. Nah, we're going to leave it in C. I think, I think it does the job. Well, I, we'll move it up to B because of that feeling of dread. I just don't like it that much as a song for the game. Um, just because of how subdued it is. So following that up, we have Castro Meridianum's The Emperor's Want. Which again, these are out of order, but... I think this job, uh, this song, this job, I think this song is fine. Um, it definitely has a militaristic theme to it, right? Uh, while also having a kind of stealthy, like we're going to have to move in and make sure nobody sees us kind of theme to it. And especially like the do, 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 is very Metal Gear. Like, I think it fits it very well. Again, I don't really like the song that much, but I'm going to put it in A, uh, top of A, because it fits the theme very, very well. And I don't dislike the song. It's just not something I would choose to listen to on its own most of the time. Following the Emperor's Want is Pinatus, the Praetorium's theme. Now, this theme is a really fun theme on its own. It definitely has the vibe of you're going up against the empire. You're you're facing off against a great threat, right? And I think it does a very good job of conveying that while also adding in some of that Meridianum theme and giving you a really kind of long build up to a dun 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 Da, da, da. Like you had the, hey, you're going up against a big threat, but here's the hero's theme. We're going to do it. We're going to move through. We're going to take them down. Let's do it. You know? And it gives you that sense of we are charging into enemies and we are going to win the day. We're going to save everybody. We're going to be the big heroes. Uh, I think it does a really good job of that. We're going to put in S tier for sure. Following that is a Tonberry's Tears, the Wandering Palace theme. I think. Uh, Atomberry's Tears is probably the first triple S on this list for a couple of reasons. The first one being that it takes a melody that we already know, it takes a melody that has been played many times for us, um, and it changes it. It it adds to it and augments it in a way, and it really conveys the emotion of you are going into the ancient city of the Ordnameans that have been completely turned into Tonberries and lost. And the strings are sad, even while the melody itself is bouncy, right? I think it does an amazing job of conveying the emotion while also giving you something familiar and then changing it giving you something to, to fall back on, something that you know, something that you recognize. This is a dungeon theme that I'm aware of, but here's a much lighter version of it. Here is a, a different take on it. Here is a feel to make you feel, you know? And it, it does a very good job of that, I think. It's, it's haunting in a lot of ways because of that. Following up, A Tonberry's Tears is Cracks in the Walls, the Amdapur Keep theme. And one thing it does that's really amazing is that it has these extra drum beats. Like, we talked about drums with cutters. It has these extra drum beats that make it sound like either somebody knocking on the wall or people, like, walking, like, marching. While also having this, this piano that feels like it's slowly descending into madness, uh, which is 
again, in a lot of ways, representative of the Amdapuri, of the the war that they fought, the war of the Magi, and how everything fell apart for them. Um, it's it's really good, especially when the piano fades away and you get that that same do do but do do but do do, and then you have what you'll come to find to know is like Diablo style theme. It's the Maki theme. Uh, come in there with also having just a little bit of choral mixed in. Like, it's really, really solid. Um, definitely giving it a triple S. It's just very, very good. It's such a cool take. Following that is the Pharaoh serious theme, Through the Gloom. I think Through the Gloom right away gets you with that choral part. And as much as the rest of the song, I feel, doesn't really catch up to that choral part, it doesn't really... Like, it's not the same level the whole time. That choral part is really strong, catches your attention right away, and kind of just draws you in, you know? Yeah, it's... The rest of the song is good. The piano is definitely solid. Um, along with the, the continued chorus, you know? And the, uh, the marching drum that comes in for a minute there, just for a, a little bit. Uh, it's, it's very solid. I think if the rest of the melody was as intense as that choral part, because it's still really strong, uh, it might've been a little bit better, but I still really like it. I, I think we'll probably put it in S tier. I definitely feel like as time passes, the team got even better. You know, like the songs continue to get better and better and better. And I do still like all these songs. Again, that's why there's not a no tier. And it stops at C. There's nothing below that. Um, even a C tier 14 song is still a, like a Final Fantasy song. You know, it's still a good song. But following up Pharaoh Sirius is The Dark Embrace. Which is the Hawk Hard, uh, Sestasha Hard... It's, we're gonna have to We're gonna have to add a bunch of hard modes to this, basically, because... That's where they all fall in is with this one theme. And I do think it's kind of a shame that all of these hard modes shared the same theme. Um, because I think it would have been maybe better to have them all individual, you know? The Dark's Embrace is still a really good theme, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's just kind of a bummer. On a whole, I think the Dark's Embrace... In fact, we're, we're going to do this right now because I forgot that all these share that. We're going to add... The Dark's Embrace. And we're just going to put all the dungeons that have the Dark's Embrace in there. Except for one. And we'll rank that one for the Dark's Embrace. And which should probably be Hawkman or Hard. Um, it's tough to say with this because of the fact that they all share it. I think it fits Hawk better than it does the others. But I think it's fine. Um, for the sake of ranking it, I would probably put it in a B. But we're going to go ahead and throw them all in in Hawk, or in Dark's Embrace category here. Um, unfortunately, it would have been cool if, if they'd all had their own individual, you know, but is what it is. Following that, we have Lost City of Amdapur. And whereas Amdapur Keep had the Descent into Madness, you know, uh, Lost City has the, this is the City of the White Mages. It's, a light, airy, you know, the city's been overtaken by spores, but don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Nothing's wrong. Everything's great. Kind of feel to it. Um, that goes for maybe the first, like, 20 seconds or so, and then in comes the, the discord. Then comes the, uh, the melody line that is tragic as, you know, no, everything's great. We're the Amdapuri. We can't lose. Oh, no, we've lost everything. It's the idea versus the reality in a really cool way in the song, I think. Um, I think they just did a really good job of conveying that. It's also a really solid melody line. It, it fits the dungeon so well. Definitely going to give it an S tier. Definitely going to give it an S tier. Following that is Birds of a Feather. The Halatali Hard, I forgot Halatali Hard has its own separate one, uh, which is right here. And it is very much the 
run the gauntlet, military style, get ready to fight, you know, style theme. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. It definitely does the job. Uh, it conveys the dungeon well. Again, it's not a song I would really listen to on my own, but I think it does a very good job of conveying the dungeon itself. Along that is Hullbreaker, Horizons Calling, which uh, is another triple S tier. It fits the dungeon so well. It is very much like the Limsa style theme, but with some really interesting changes. It's a little bit more staccato than the regular Limsa theme. Um, da -da, da -da 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 -da. It's very cool. It sells the idea of the, you know, heading off to war style theme, but then it has a really good melody line as well that the whole time just screams, yeah, this is Limsa. This is, this is the Limsa military uh, in a way that I think is, is better than what Halatali Hard was trying to do. I do still think Halatali Hard fits that dungeon very well, but I think Holebreaker has more of a personal identity is maybe the way I want to put it. I don't know. It's, it's difficult to say because I, I do think all the songs in this game are good, but I think Holebreaker does a very good job of selling you on that this is a Limsa military operation. Following that is Temtara Hard. which I put right here instead of Holotali. Oops, that's on me. Uh, Holotali Hard is right here. I made that mistake without even paying attention to it. Tamtara Hard. It's like, it's still the Tamtara theme, right? But it's got a different undertow to it now. It's a little bit more mournful. It's a little bit more uh, sad. Now resolves into a different chord uh, that is a lot more discordant. And uh, it fits it really well. Again, not a song that I would listen to outside the dungeon, but in the dungeon, really, really nice. I think we're probably going to put it at the top of A, especially once the chorus starts coming in, the choral group. And then you have that... It's, uh, it's really good. Really, really nice. Following that is the Snowcloak theme. So the Snowcloak theme is the one that I was talking about when I mentioned Sestasha and how... Sestasha's theme was like it there, but I didn't feel like it's super fat, you know? Uh Snowcloaks super does. It's really soft. It's not that serious of a theme. It's you know, it's not hitting large swells or anything like that, but it absolutely sells you on the idea of, hey, here's this snow cave that's barely ever been interfered with, you know? Uh, it fits the dungeon super well. And even though it's not something that, again, I would listen to on its own, it's very, very nice. I like it quite a bit. And uh, I dare say, of the dungeon themes, it's probably the most recognizable right away, other than maybe the Twinning or Academia Anadir because of what they did there. Uh, you hear that and you're like, oh yeah, that's Snowcloak. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Following that is Sestasha Hard, which also has its own individual theme. And I don't really think this theme fits this dungeon at all. This, this theme is like super victorious. It's like a, hey, you did it. Good job. It's like, but this dungeon is supposed to be about like going to fight the Kraken again, you know, and, and diving down into the depths you didn't go into last time. And there's no real, like, sense of exploration to it. It's just like, good job! And it's like, okay. I like the song a lot. I've listened to it quite a few times outside of the game. But I don't think it fits the dungeon at all, unfortunately. No matter how triumphant it sounds. Following that is Karnhard. Theme, honestly. Um, it definitely has a mysterious feel to it, right? Uh, but I think we're going to put it in A. It's not a song. I don't really like it. I think it's fine. It works very well in the dungeon. Um, it doesn't really say anything about the dungeon, but it does its job, you know? Following that is Keeper of the Lake, which has a top-tier song. I love this song. Um, but how well does it fit the dungeon? I actually think it fits the dungeon really well because of the mix of Garlean 
technology and their military and how much it shares with the Praetorium theme in that way, um, along with Midgard Sormer. And it has a rising swell of da na 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 um which I feel very much represents Midgard Sormer and the dread that you have going to have to meet with him, but also like his power, you know? Uh it's a very solid theme. Definitely gonna put it in S. I like it a lot. I like it a whole lot. Following that is Wanderer's Palace. Hard. As much as I dislike this dungeon, I think the theme fits it really well. That sudden uh, really catches your attention and tells you something's not right here. This is very, it's very much the theme you've heard before, but everything's not okay. And there's an undercurrent behind it that wasn't there before of almost like rushing you along. It's like, hey, you gotta hurry. This is bad. Um, I think it fits it really well. I just, again, I don't like this dungeon at all, but we'll put it pretty high up in A. I think it's pretty solid. Following that is Amdapur Keep Hard. It fits the dungeon. Um, it's a good long while into the song before the actual, like, Amdapur melody line comes in. And once it does, it, it really feels like you're in a strange alien version of Amdapur. Uh, especially once the, the synth wave is kind of in the back. Um, and it's really solid then, but it takes a while to get there. I think I'm probably going to put it at the top of B for now. I do like it, but following that is Dusk Vigil's theme, Descent. This theme, it's really solid. It conveys the like melancholy of Dusk Vigil while also giving you a different variation of the like dragon song itself, which is really cool. I love that the first dungeon you go into for Heaven's Word right away is giving you that feeling of like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm definitely going to give it an S tier. Uh, probably pretty high up in S tier, honestly, uh, because I just think it's really, really solid. Following that is Slumber Eternal, the Psalm All theme. Again, very much a let's fight kind of theme. It, uh, it has the drums backing it. And then it gives way into... Uh, Doom, boom, 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 doom, boom, doom. Which we've been taught at this point to kind of identify with the dragons with, the Dravanians with. Then it gives you that rising melody of, hey, you're climbing. Hey, it's time to climb some all itself. And I think it does a really good job of that. <clears throat> I think if that rising theme had kicked in earlier, um, it's perfect the first time when you have the cutscene, right? But every time from then on, you're going to already be climbing by the time that theme kicks in. Uh, so I do think, you know, I understand why they had that buffer in there, but still. Very good song, though. Definitely an A tier. Following that is Roar of the Wyrm from the Airy. This song is amazing to me. Um, I mentioned in the other video for the dungeons that the Airy is a dungeon that I did for two weeks straight, once a day, every day. I hate this dungeon because of that, but I love this theme. This theme is yet again the... It's got the combat theme mixed into it, so it's telling you right away you're going to be fighting, while also having the... Da -da -da, and the build-up of, hey, it's time to go fight Nidhogg. We're here to fight Nidhogg. Let's go beat Nidhogg, you know? Um, it very much is a build up to a great conflict. Uh, and I just think it's really solid. I think it does its job very well. I'm going to put it in S tier. Following that is Hallowed Halls from the Vault. And again, like Hawk, it's pretty easy to convey the idea of a like holy cathedral, right? But once you've got that idea, where do you take it? And I think the vault, spoilers, does an amazing job with it. Uh, you have the organ that is selling you on the, you are in a holy cathedral. And then the organ begins to actually have a melody of its own instead of just being a, hey, it's an organ for the sake of play. Uh, the melody that begins there 
and continues as it rises and falls and rises and falls. In a lot of ways, I feel like it perfectly encapsulates your attempts to strike through the vault to get to uh, where you're trying to go. I don't want to spoil too much in this video for the story, but I think it does a very good job of selling you on that idea of you are raiding the Holy Sea and you are working your way through it. And it's just a very, very well done track. It fits its area perfectly. Following the vault, we have the Great Google Library, Ink Long Drive. This is one of the first orchestrian roles that I ever got. I bought it off the market board uh, because I loved the song from this dungeon so much. I think this song really fits a library theme. It's, it's kind of, you know, in the background at the start. And then it comes in with just like this erratic melody line that almost immediately cuts away again. Uh, and I think it really fits the idea of this library is too much knowledge in a lot of ways, and learning too much was too, a real bad problem for a lot of people in here. But I like it a lot. And then about maybe 40 seconds or so in, it kicks into a full-on melody line. And it's just really solid. Again, I wish that melody line came in a little bit sooner, but I absolutely adore the Google library theme. It's really, really good. Arf Imagination. Do 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 a theme yet again that we've heard many times before, but done up in a different way. Sounds really good here. Gives you a different kind of feel for it, you know. I like it a lot. I think it's really good. Um there are other versions of this theme that I like more, but I think they did a really good job with it. We're gonna put it at the top of B tier. We'll put it at the end of A tier. It's still really solid. It is very, you know, victorious, but also challenging. It gives that theme very well, I believe. Following that is Never Reap. And that song is called Like a Summer Rain. I think it's fine. It, it definitely sells the idea of, you know, hey, this is a, a walk through the clouds almost, you know? Um... I don't know. I think it's fine. We're going to put it in A as well. It it does a great job of what it's trying to do. It just doesn't really work for me as a song, you know? Following that is Fractal Continuum's Unbreakable, I think is the name? Yeah, Unbreakable. This fits so well. It has a techno feel to it right away that captures the idea of, like, elegant tech, right? It has a really good, like, backbeat to it. Absolutely solid. It's a song that I've listened to outside of the game as well. It's going to go in S. Following that is Poison Ivy from St. Mussian's Arboretum. So, when I mentioned Sastasha earlier and that there were other songs in the game, like Snowcloak, that did a good job of selling you on the idea of like a, this is just a simple song that's you know, not going to get too complicated, but just convey the idea of you are in a, a serene place, right? Uh, I think Snowcloak and Arboretum do a such a good job of that. They convey that feeling so well in such a short amount of time, too, that it's kind of crazy, you know? Uh, very, very good song. Very, very, very well placed. I love it. I think it does a very good job. S tier. What is this dungeon that I missed here? Is this, is this dungeon that I missed? That's original Holotali. I talked about that earlier and put it in B tier. How'd it get back down here? Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, following that is Pharaoh's Hard. I actually think Pharaoh's Hard is a really good song on its own. It's uh, Upon the Rocks is the name of it. It's really solid. It fits the idea of the lighthouse has fallen and you have to retake it, you know? I do still like the original Pharaoh's soundtrack more, but it's very good. Gonna go in A for sure. Following that is Up the Down Staircase. The anti-tower theme. 100%. Fits the theme so well. Sells you on the idea of you were in this fantasy style situation 
nothing is right, everything is wrong, but oh no, look, everything's okay. And I love that about it. It's such a good theme. It it just it conveys it perfectly. Following that is Lost City of Amdapur Hard. Amdapur Hard, it has this same feel of the regular Amdapur theme, but in the dungeon it's raining and somehow the music makes it feel like it's raining, you know? Like the way that the Amdapur theme now drops on you of do 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 it just it sells that so well. And I love it so much. The M4 theme already was one of my favorites, but I actually like this version more than the original version. It's very, very good. Following that is Sorkai. Apologies. Again, triple S tier. Uh, you take the dragon song and you have it be just a choral version at the start with a slow buildup. And again, I've, I've been on record saying I'm not a huge fan of slow buildups, right? with a slow buildup that within the first 20 seconds is met by this do, 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 do. And then it just continues to ramp up as it just builds into the main theme of it itself, which is the same theme from a couple of other songs that I've mentioned in here um, that I said there were better versions of Never Reap, uh, where you get the actual Dragon Song itself. Still coming in with choir. It's so good. Sorkai's theme is so good. It's absolutely great. Following Sorkai is Holy Consult, Holebreaker Hard. And yet again, just like the original Holebreaker theme, I think they, they knocked it out of the park. It sells the idea of a military operation Limsa while also having a unique click to it. Duh. Duh which is on the beat, if it sounds really great. And then the original Holebreaker theme comes in and just walks away with it. It's top tier. It's so good. Zelfatal's Grounded is also really solid. I like it a lot. It really sells the idea of moving up, of an uplift, which is what you were doing all throughout Zelfatal, is going up, getting higher and higher and higher in this fortress as the music is pushing you up from below. Uh, it's very, very good. Lots of horns, lots of wind instruments to try and, or brass instruments, that is, to try and, and really sell that idea of pushing you upwards. We're going to put it in S. Following Zelfatal is Google Hard, which takes the Google theme and then goes, hey, remember what we did with Tamtara Hard? What if we did that for Google Hard, where now it's that theme, but sad? <laughs> And it actually works really well. It's it's really solid. Um, I like it a lot. It's also going to go in triple S, probably right behind the Google theme. Because once the Google theme does kick in, oh, hmm. Bale Stars also has a really powerful theme. It's uh, it's very militaristic, you know, but it definitely sells the idea of assault the fortress, take it down. I think they did a really good job with it. Uh, we're probably gonna put it in an S. It never really rises above the other military themes for me the way that Holebreaker does, but it's good. Following that, it, oh, Belsar's Walls theme is named Another Brick, by the way. Following that is Quicksand, the Sum All Hard theme. And this one is so good. It, it's a great song on its own. And then it sells the chaotic feel that Sum All Hard has of like, oh man, this is bad. Especially when you get to some of the tougher pulls, it's like, yeah, things are falling apart. We got to get to the bottom of the mountain. We, you know, before we were ascending, but now we're descending. We got to get down there quick. Uh, it's just a really good theme. It, it sells the idea of moving downwards. I like it a lot. Now we get into the Stormblood dungeon themes, and I do not have the names for these songs. I apologize. Um, but Siren Song C. Siren Song C. Dawnbound, uh, yet again, it can be very easy to sell the idea of a haunted vessel or island or things like that, but just because you can sell the idea of it doesn't mean you can carry through with it, right? And Dawnbound does a very, very good job of carrying through with it. 
it also mixes in a little bit of the 1.0 limsa theme which really tickles me uh but even without that i think it does a very good job of selling the haunting mystery that is the siren song c dungeon and uh definitely top tier probably top of s tier i think it even does a better job of it than hawk does which is crazy because i didn't think i would ever say that about any other dungeon when it comes to uh haunted dungeons you know following that is shisui of the violet tides the open box another theme that is a very very solid dungeon theme sells the idea of the dungeon very well um gives you the melancholic the castle has fallen everything's fallen apart and it's deep under the water and nothing's going right kind of feel uh i do think maybe it could do a little bit more to sell the you're retaking that castle uh with a little bit more victorious in there but you know hey at the same time i think it's a very good theme that definitely encapsulates the idea of you're way deep below the ocean and uh you gotta fight down here because things are not great following that is Bardum's metal most unworthy this theme is triple s tier it's really really good there are plenty of times that i find myself humming this theme it fits the dungeon perfectly it gives you that feel of moving forward of progression while also you know reminding you that you have to do, you have to pass this test you don't have a choice you have to pass this test I just, I really like it. I think it's really, really good. It's also a really good remix of like the Ozim Steps theme to give you the feel of you are still in the steps, but you're moving forward from them. You know, you are progressing even past what the steps had to offer. I like it a lot. Following that, we have Doma Castle, the Gates of the Moon. Uh, this theme was the Job Actions trailer theme. It's a good theme. I like it a lot. It does fit Doma Castle. It's got like a panicked feel to it at the start, which is then met with the melody line as it comes in uh, and kind of like bombards you with that melody line. But it's really solid. I like it a lot. I think that it does a really good job with that in the same way that, say, the Dragon Song was used. It's not Revolutions, mind you, but it's still a very good, very good song. Put it in S tier for sure. Following that is Alienus, the Castro Mabania theme. I think it definitely sells you on the spooky of Castro Mabania and how odd things can get there. I don't know that it sells you on the rest of the dungeon because unlike Meridianum and its stealthy kind of feel, you're not sneaking into Abania, you're assaulting Abania. Um, it does still definitely have that, that undercurrent of victory is coming. You know, you're going to fight for this challenge. You're going to win it. Um, but at the same time, it's not quite as solid to me as, say, the Castro theme was. So I think we're actually we're going to put it behind Meridianum. Following that is the Alamigo theme, Liberty or Death. I think this seems really solid. It definitely feels like you're assaulting a nation at this point, which you're not, really. You're just assaulting a nation's army that is set up inside the capital of another nation. But it gives you that feel of, like, large-scale warfare. And I like it quite a bit. It's a very solid song. We're going to put it in S as well. Following that is Deception, the Kugane Castle theme. This one, I think, fits the actual fight against Yojimbo more than it fits the dungeon itself. Like, it, it definitely has that Eastern feel to it, right? That's what they're going for. Um, this also was mixed into the Job Actions trailer. But it just... I don't know that it really, like, speaks for the dungeon. It reminds me a lot of my problems with Shisui, which I'm probably going to move Shisui down a little bit. Uh, because although I do think it does sell the idea of Thousands of Leagues Under the Sea, I do wish it had more of that attacking a castle thing. And I wish this did too. This just kind of feels like a, a frenzy. And I like it. I absolutely love the song. I listen to the song all the time. But I don't know that it super fits Kugane Castle. Um... Kugane Castle is not just a melee, you know? It is a series of battles. And yes, it does convey that. It definitely conveys that better than, say, Sastasha's theme conveys Sastasha. But we're going to put it in A tier instead. Following that is Their Deadly Mission, the Temple of the Fist theme. This song... It's not a bad song, again, kind of like the Kugane Castle. Uh, theme is neither of those are bad songs right 
And it definitely has the idea of progression, again, that Alamigo and Doma Castle have. But it it feels kind of muddled with some of the other songs from Stormblood. It doesn't feel super unique compared to all of them. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of its own musical identity, I guess I would say. And it kind of just feels like, yeah, it's another Stormblood song. It doesn't scream Temple of the Fist to me in any way whatsoever. There's no monastic feel to it in any way. And that's kind of a shame to me. I think that something with maybe a little bit, I'm not saying it has to be chanting, but something that tells me that I'm in a monastery or in the ruins of one anyway, would have been a little bit better to me for this dungeon. As it is, I feel like the song could have gone almost anywhere in Stormblood. Because it is a good song. I like it. But we're going to put it in a B. Following that is Far From Home, the Drowned City of Scala's theme, which absolutely, it takes what I was talking about with Shisui, about feeling like you're underwater, and gives you that even more. Um, the constant backbeat met with the haunting melody line of the chimes is just really strong and makes you feel like you are in a place that you should not be in a lot of ways. And I like it a lot. It's not a song that I listen to on its own very often, but I think it fits the dungeon perfectly. Very, very good. Following that is Fractum Hard Unbreakable Duality. I actually like this more than I like the regular Fractum theme. Um, it's really good. It, uh, it basically takes the idea of Unbreakable and then ramps it up to 11. It gives you the the main theme of unbreakable and then also adds in a brand new battle theme to it and it just sounds really really good we're gonna put it in s tier it's really good following that is down where daemons dwell hell's lids theme i actually think hell's lids theme fits it perfectly as well Despite my complaints about Hell's Lid in the, uh, the other video, uh, Hell's Lid's theme definitely sells the idea of, you know, it's almost like a bolero. You're moving into the flames, moving down into the volcano. Uh, but also mixed in with it is the Far Eastern style uh, swell that sells you on the idea that you're moving down into this mythical place. Again, like Scala, that you should not be going to. Um, because you have no right to be there, you know? It, it sells the idea of something bigger than yourself. We're going to put it at the top of S tier. After that is the Swallow's Compass. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Or Earth, Wind, and Water, sorry. Oh. Uh, Swallow's Compass, very, very good theme. Very, very solid. Uh, what I was talking about with the idea of Temple of the Fist, I actually think Swallow's Compass sells you on that premise. The idea of this was a holy place. Which, again, that's what I wanted Temple of the Fist to be. But Swallow's Compass, I think, runs with that idea. And goes to a really good place with it. it. It really sells you on the idea of, hey, this is still, like, the theme of Young Cha. But it's also a holy version of it. And I think that's really good. We'll put it in S as well. We'll rearrange S where we need to. Following that is the burn. A land... Long dead. The burn. In a lot of ways, it's like Snow Cloak. Uh, it's almost the exact same melody in a weird way. But more mournful? As in, like, look upon this despair. Lose heart. You know, like, give up. Is almost what it's trying to tell you. As you are faced with this vast empty before you, you know? Um, not the EMT though, ho oh. But, uh, then it just comes in out of nowhere with this slow building melody of like, look at what all is around you, but it doesn't have to end here. Like that melody is progression, it's propelling you forward, it's telling you to keep going, and I absolutely adore that. That melody is surrounded by this haunting, haunting orchestra almost. And it just refuses to give up as the the rest of the Burns theme comes in to follow it and just swells upward again, telling you again that in the face of all this adversity, there is still hope. Absolutely has to go in triple S tier. I love A Land Long Dead. It's such a good song. Following that, we have St. 
Marciane's Arboretum hard. And whereas the first time it was this gentle, peaceful song, now it's a haunting version. And it has some of the Dravanian Hinterlands theme thrown in there as well to really sell you on the idea of like, this is not okay. Things are not good here. Uh, it matches the visuals perfectly of the idea of this was a beautiful green place that has died. Um, it's so good. It's one of the reasons I love this dungeon so much. It does such a good job of selling you on this idea of, no, everything here is dead. You should leave. And uh, you just having to trust through it anyway. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Following that is a Paul most murderous. The Gimlet Dark. Right from Go, it sets out. It is the battle theme mixed with the Garlean theme, mixed with the resistance theme. We are in this to win this. Let's go. And then it comes in behind with just that little bit of the Alamigo theme. And it just reminds you through that that you are fighting for the freedom of the Alamigans right now. You are returning Alamigo. You are going to push these Garleans off. Alamigo is yours and they cannot have it. And I love it when Soken mixes in these little bits of other themes to sell you on the idea. I think the Gimlet Darks theme is definitely triple S tier. It's again, not something that I would listen to on its own. But as the, the Garlean theme cuts in, and is the big bombastic horns of like, the Garleans are knocking at the gates. It's met with that resistance theme cutting back up and in, saying, no, we will not fall over. We will not bend back. We will not let the Garleans win this. We're going to push them back. Uh, it's, it's really, really good. It's so solid, man. Following that, we have to fire and sword, the Gimlet Dark theme. Uh, yet again, or the Gimlet Dark, the whole Mr. Switch. Yet again, like Gimlet Dark, this is probably not a song that I would listen to much on its own, but it absolutely conveys to you that the city is under siege. Uh, the townspeople are dying. You need to hurry. This song beckons you forward. It urges you to rush. It tells you to get to the city. You have to hurry. Everything's going poorly. You gotta go. And it does a really good job of that. I think it's an S tier for sure. Following that is Figment's Dawn Meg theme. This is just such a weird yet perfect song for this area. It very much is, here's the fairies. This is their world. Better get used to it. And although I do think it could have used a couple more interludes coming in, you know, I think it does a very good job of it. And definitely deserves the S tier. Following that is Kitana Ravel, Unwound. Triple S tier. I adore this song. It fits so well to the Ravel. It's this weird, strange mix of genres to give you this, this mysterious yet peppy song that's like, let's go explore some ruins, man. Like, what is going on here? Let's face some dark. Let's face down what's in here and let's figure it out. And it, it's, oh, once it gets going, it has a little bit of a buildup with that do, 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 do. Once it gets going in the do, 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 boo, it's so good. Such a good song, man. Again, conveys it so well. You are in, yet again, a place you should not be. And the song is informing you of that. And I really love that. Following that is Deep Down, Malika's Wells theme. I'm not a huge fan of this dungeon, but I do think the theme is pretty good. I think it has a little bit of a long lead in. And even once it gets going, it's kind of still undersold in a lot of ways. I think this this theme undersells the dungeon. Um, It's just kind of in the background, you know? Like a lot of these others that we've mentioned, it just kind of sits there. So I'm going to put it at the end of A, I believe, is where it's going to wind up sitting. Following that is Mount Gulg in the belly of the beast. Yet again, like Samal or Zelfatal, music is pushing you upwards, pushing you towards victory, leading you up into Bothry's Fortress as you climb Mount Gulg. 
pushing you ever forward, you know? Uh, and I think that fits very well. Mount Golg is one of those weird dungeons that doesn't really have an identity in and of itself because it's kind of two different dungeons mashed together. And that's fine. I think it's a very fun dungeon, and I think they did a really good job with it. Um, but the theme then has to be on the idea of victory. And so when that second line comes in, which is the triumphant you're winning line, it almost feels odd because the theme before was like moving up, not win the fight. But I think it fits really well with the idea of these two dungeons mashed together of move up, win, move up, win. And I think they did a really good job with that. And about a minute or so in, when you think the song is crescendoed, it does it again. It builds up a second time to tell you that as high as you've climbed already, that's not enough. You have to climb higher and keep winning. You have to continue until you've reached the end and won every fight you can. And I think that's really cool. Most songs would stop at the end of that first crescendo and wouldn't do a second one right away because musically it's, it's not as satisfying. You want to resolve the crescendo and then be able to build up to another one. But now we just go within the belly of the beast. We just hit it a second time. And I think that's really cool. From there, we go to Amalrat, Mortal Instance. Oh, right, sorry, Triple S. <laughs> Mortal Instance, you go from Mount Golg, right, in the belly of the beast, climb ever higher, achieve every win, to Amalrat, which basically is yelling at you musically, everything's bad it's fallen apart there's nothing we can do this is our swan song in a lot of ways and it's really powerful it's the the almost panicked like slight choral segments that you can hear as they come in uh the the actual like the build and then just that simple do 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 and then the echo of it. Because this is just an echo of the Amalrath that was. It's so good. It's so powerful. So can knock it out of the park with Mortal Instance. And then it builds up again. It crescendos up again. To tell you that even if this is an echo, you have to keep moving forward, right? And I love that so much. It fits it so well. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. In a lot of ways, too, it also, like, in some ways, too, it shows Emmett Selk. This may be an echo, but he has to continue forward. You know, he has to reach the logical conclusion of this. It's really good. It's a really good theme. Following that is, we're going to do Academia Anidir first, because I want to finish with the twinning. Uh, I think the, the cut-in of the static really takes this to a level that it would not have, I think, without it. It's very much like a smooth jazz kind of feel, but the cut of the static reminds you that, no, this is not the real Academia Anidur. This is just the Echo. This is just the Leftovers. This is the Remnant. You are listening to it a second time. This is not the live version, you know? Uh, and I think that's really cool. Then you have that sick sick jazz that comes in and it just feels really good the piano the piano is so good in this song absolutely great sells the idea of the dungeon very well super cool and finally a long fall twinnings theme this is my favorite song in 14 It's upbeat, it's peppy, but it also mixes in so much. It mixes in Omega, it mixes in Crystal Tower, it mixes in a little bit of the Crystarium, and it mixes in Alexander. It's so good. It just, it's the perfect embodiment of what this dungeon is, which is an amalgam of everything that has come before so that the Crystal Tower could do what it needed to do. And when you get to the final boss and realize what's going on there, the theme fits even more. It is the perfect theme for this dungeon. 
It absolutely sells what this dungeon is. Mixes in everything you've heard before to make a new cohesive whole and is a bop in and of itself. Great theme. Oh. Do we want to move anything here? Do we want to move anything here? We've, we've got everything pretty much sorted out now. What do we want to do? I say we got to sort them. We got to sort them. Uh, man. Okay. I think all five of these have to go higher. I just don't know where I'm going to put. Uh... Again, my favorite song. We're going to we're going to do this. Uh I'm going to cheat and put my favorites above everything else. Uh The Ravel and then Mount Golg. I think those fit so well. Barnum's is probably going to go up too cuz I think it fits really well. Um The Vault. This order's honestly not bad though after that. I might move Holebreaker 2 down, Holebreaker Hard down and the Burn up. Actually, we might do this. Yeah, I think we're going to move a Maurat up too. These are really good. All of these are really amazing songs. And all of these are really good songs, but like these. And then for S tier. Zamayo could go lower, I think. And uh, Balsian's Arboretum could go higher. Follows Compass could probably go higher. I think Malika's could stay where it is. Um, yeah, it's just so we can go down. I think we'll move Fractal 1 down, too. I'm going to go ahead and move Praetorium down some, too. That looks pretty good, though. I like. I think Swallow's Compass could go up a little bit. Yeah, I like this. I like this. This is good. Uh, for A... This is not bad where it's at right now. Honestly. I would probably move Brave Flocks and Tamtara down, though. And Holotali could go to... Yeah, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. Uh, For B tier... Go, and then for C tier... Here we go. All right. Let me know your thoughts on this ranking in the comment section down below. I understand that this is the most subjective of any of these that I've ever done. And you may completely disagree with me about my thoughts on what the music is trying to say. And that's fine. Everybody has a right to an opinion and I'd like to hear yours. So let me know in the comment section down below. But until next time, I've been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. Remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum. Final Fantasy XIV music has to offer.